Welcome to Open Studios at Virtual Quilt Festival 2020, sponsored by Oliso. My name is Kim, and I'm one half of the Brimfield Awakening team. We specialize in English paper piecing, and you can find all of our patterns and our EPP notions at our website at brimfieldawakening.com. Today, we're going to do something I call cheater EPP. This block is called sand dollar block, and we're going to use English paper piecing templates to make it, but you're not going to do any hand sewing. So let's get to work. Here's what you'll need to make the sand dollar block. We are using Essex homespun as our background, and I've pre-cut this to eight and a half inches square. I'm also using Liberty Tonalon. This beautiful fabric print is called Edenham, and I'm partial to it because I like the design and also because my daughter's name is Eden. You'll need some sharp scissors. We use a Soline glue pen, Roxanne glue based it. This is the template we'll be using today. It's from our Brimfield Blooming Star pattern, and this is the ice cream cone scoop. If you don't have this, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to make your own. And hopefully you've been saving all your junk mail or those political mailers because this actually makes pretty good cardstock. We'll be tracing this design onto here. Get yourself a nice pen for tracing. And don't forget your Oliso Mini. This is definitely going to come in handy today, especially when we set our glue basting. And you'll also want this free downloadable print that we provided. This is our 72 degree angle placement free download. And if you go to www.brimfieldawakening.com, you can get this when you click on our Brimfield Blooming Star pattern, you will see this show up and you can download it for free. And just like that, I forgot something. I will be using a light box today, my daylight company Wafer 2, but if you don't have a light box, it's okay, you can just use a window. The sand dollar block that we're making today is actually a hack on our Brimfield Blooming Star pattern. And this is the template we'll be using. It's called our ice cream cone scoop. This little piece can be found right here in the pattern. Can you see that? So this little piece we took and we created the sand dollar block right here. Now, normally when you use these acrylic templates, you're tracing the outside of the acrylic for your fabric plus seam allowance, and the inside are your paper shapes that you use to wrap the fabric around. Because I wanted this block to be a little bigger than usual, I actually traced the outside of the acrylic to make my papers. I'll show you what I mean. If you have our Brimfield Blooming Star papers, then this is the piece you'll be using. The nice thing about our designs is that we usually have papers that offer perforation. You would just fold along here and rip this piece off. However, if you don't have these papers, you can also use the acrylic template to trace your shapes onto the cardstock. We talked about this in the last segment. Normally you would trace this inside area for your papers, but because the sand dollar block is a little bigger, I traced the outside of the template. I'm using just a mailer that came in, a junk mail piece for a pizza place. I noticed that the cardstock that comes in the mail is a really affordable way to make your own papers. It's just the right thickness. Also, all those political mailers, I'm sure, that have been piling up your mailbox, they would also be great for tracing your own papers. You're going to trace five of these. And if you don't have the shape, stay tuned. I'm gonna show you the dimensions so that you can make your own. If you don't have the templates or the papers, it's okay, they're very easy to make. If I measure the edge of this, you'll see the distance, the length is about two and seven sixteenth inches. So all you'll do on your cardstock is simply measure that distance from the right angle down here and leave a little ticking mark. Same for the other side. So not quite two and a half inches. And then you'll just take something that can give you a curve. I happen to have this protractor out and you'll connect the two endpoints. 
You might have a small bowl that will work here or a roll of tape, or maybe you'll just freehand it. It doesn't matter if it's a little off. What matters is that all of these shapes are approximately the same size. The slope here is obviously a little less curved than my slope here. But you can play with this and see what you come up with. You might like it a lot better. Before I begin tracing and then cutting out my fabric, I'm going to give it a nice pressing with my Oliso Mini. I love this iron. It is small but mighty. It gets super hot, it gets the job done, and it doesn't fatigue me. It's not so heavy. And what's nice about this surface, I often use a lot of interfacing and a lot of glues, and it never gets gunked up. And when it does, I can just wipe it off. It's game changer. It's important when you're tracing the fabric for your paper templates that you remember to add seam allowance. So when you're using the papers you already trace, I suggest you go to the back side of your fabric, especially if it's a darker print, so you can see. Now the exact seam allowance doesn't matter. It just has to be enough for you to be able to wrap it over your paper template. So if you're using your templates as the papers you already traced, just eyeball add some seam allowance. And remember, if you're using our Brimfield Blooming Star acrylic, you have to remember to add the seam allowance. So don't just trace the outside of the acrylic because that will be the shape of the paper. You have to add seam allowance that you can wrap around the papers to glue base them down. is glue basting the papers to your fabric. Center your paper inside the fabric that you've already cut out and then using your sew line glue pen we will get that stuck to the cardstock. We like the sew line glue pen because the glue here is safe for your fabric. It'll wash out and it won't damage it. And what's best about glue basting any curves is it makes it really easy. Now this is called a convex curve, and it's the type of curve that will look like a pie crust once you're done folding the fabric over. Because you have more fabric going onto a smaller surface area, the leftover fabric for the space is going to pucker up like a pie crust. And it's okay, because this is the back of the shape, so it can look as ugly as we want. What matters is the front of your fabric wants to look nice and smooth. So if the back looks terrible, no worries. I'll flip this over for you so you can see for yourself. Here's the back, there are those nasty puckers. We just want this to be smooth and the front to lay flat. Let's do another one. Oh, does this pizza make you hungry? <laughs> I'm putting a smear of glue there. And I'm being a little liberal with my glue because I'm not hand stitching any of these pieces. I'm not super worried if the glue goes right to the edge of the paper. Normally in English paper piecing, you would wanna be careful to leave a little dry pocket here between where the glue line is and the edge of the paper because that's where your needle will be going. But since I'm not doing any hand stitching, I'm not paying too close attention to that. There's the back. There's that pie crust pucker. This is smooth though, the edge, and the front is smooth. I'm going to finish glue basting these, and then we're going to take things over to the light box in the next step. This is my Wafer 2 light box from Daylight Company, and I'm going to use it to help me trace my 72 degree angles onto my background square. This is going to help you figure out where to line up your sand dollar block pieces. So, as I mentioned at the very beginning, you'll want a background square that is cut eight and a half inches, and then see how easy the Daylight Company makes it to see your lines. If you don't have a light box, it looks like here, you should be able to see through your fabric. If you're using a busier background fabric, you might not be able to, and if that's the case, I recommend a window. I'm just using a color pencil, and make sure that one of the squares, 
like this side is lining up perpendicular to this right here. That's how I always start. And from the center, you're going to just trace the spokes of these lines onto what will be the back of your background square. After this, I'm going to take this over to the pressing board and using my Oliso Mini, I'm going to iron these lines to have guides onto where to place my little ice cream cone scoops. And as I mentioned also, go to brimfieldawakening.com and search for Brimfield Blooming Star and this is a free download that you can get today. This next part takes what I call fiddling. You want to line up from that point this of this right angle to the center of your curve along the spokes. So you want to find that center point and at the same time get these edges to kiss the next shape over. And you're going to have to play with these. Ultimately, this comes down to an eyeballing it situation. As long as the star that ends up resulting in the center of your block looks pretty even all the way around, you're good. So right now I, I can tell I already have a problem. These are too close together. So I'm gonna have to back out my shapes a little bit and let the fiddling continue. Once you get the ice cream scoops lined up so that that center star looks good, the next step is to glue baste individually each piece down. And yes, I know the cardstock is still in there. That is okay. I find that keeping it in for this step makes things easier. I'm using Roxanne glue based it. This is an applique glue. It's safe for your fabric and it's temporary. But what I like is when you heat set it, it really stays put well while you're taking your block to your sewing machine. If you don't have this, we carry this on our website at brimfieldawakening.com. So pick up one piece at a time and slowly put little dots of the Roxanne glue based it around the edge of your seam allowance. Don't disturb the rest of these, let them rest right there. And you'll just go around your block and slowly glue base these down. And then the important part is to heat set it with your iron as you go. This way they're guaranteed not to move on you. So I'll take my Oliso Mini and just hold it down here for a couple of seconds. And that gets everything nice and set. Let's do another one. Lift this next one up and add the Roxanne glue based it. I'm putting it not at the very edge, but close enough. And then lift this up, line the tip of it along your pressing lines and make sure the two corners over here from the curve kiss its neighboring corner. And heat set that really nice with my Oliso. This is the perfect size iron for this project. It's not too big. It doesn't upset my other blocks. And this iron is hot. All right, I'm going to glue base the rest of these and then I'll meet you over at my sewing machine. Next, I'm going to machine applique my block to the background square. And on my machine, I have a really tiny zigzag stitch. The width of the zigzag is one and the stitch length is 1.5. Also make sure you have it in the needle down position. I'm first going to make sure I zigzag this inside star and then I'll go around and zigzag the outside circumference. Make sure to leave your needle down when you go around those points and tuck in those little dog ears as you go. Now it's time to cut away from behind the applique. You'll have to give some tugs to those cardstock pieces and you might find some tweezers helpful for the corners. Ta-da! We hope you loved making your sand dollar block. Please share yours with us at Brimfield Awakening on Instagram. We're so glad you could join us and make sure you stop by the Oliso virtual booth at www.oliso.com and follow them on their social media at Oliso Home.